Okay, we're open to attendees and I'm recording. I'm gonna go ahead and make Lynn host. Okay, well, if everybody's ready, I'm gonna call this meeting of governance, organization and legislation to order at 10.30, exactly. And pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting of GOL, Governance uh, Organization Legislation, is being conducted by remote participation, and we are being recorded. And um, let me just, we have one attendee. So, um, just letting people know that later in the meeting, there will be opportunity for public comment. And at that point, um, I will uh, read out the instructions uh, that are necessary. And at that point, the public may uh, offer a comment. Everyone's had a chance, hopefully, to take a look at our uh, packet. We've got an agenda in front of us, pretty much gonna follow the order that it has uh, it is here. The first item on the agenda is to review the single-use plastic ban prohibition. That is bylaw 3.28. And I invited uh, Councillor Darcy Dumont to attend uh, since she is the sponsor. And I'm going to uh, ask her to uh, uh, present the uh, uh, item and we will review it uh, with her. Um, so Lynn, if you're able to bring that up, um, I don't know if uh, I'd yeah. like to get on the screen. There, there are two versions there. The, the most recent one is the one that starts with purpose and does not include findings. Right. Um, I updated it after counselors made comments at the first reading. Okay. And which I'm, one is the one that you- Find that, hold on. Hmm. So it's the one that has A, purpose, B, definitions. Okay, I have it. Thank Let's you, Lynn. Get back to this. Go to screen sharing. Are we set? Not yet, we're getting there though. Oh, I'm not Is looking. that it? Let's see. Oh, oh, wait a minute. What am I doing here? I'm looking at something else. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. That's All right. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, I, uh, I understand that the reason that um, the bylaw review committee um, made some of the changes that they did was because they um, were trying to eliminate wordiness and background information that might be dated. Um, so that's the reason why I went back and, and amended my first proposal. I, I actually took out um, a whole lot of, I took out the whole finding section um, that included a lot of um, whereas type language about the, the um, data about plastic pollution and so on. So I took all that out and just left one sentence, um, which I put in, I replaced the former purpose section, which was very generic and simply said for public health and welfare. Um, and replaced it with the actual purpose of the bylaw, which had previously been in the finding section. And so I just put the one sentence, which is um, the primary purpose of this bylaw is to reduce the negative effects of single use pl plastic bags on the environment, reduce contamination of plastic bags in residential recycling streams, and most importantly, to encourage consumers to bring re reusable bags while shopping, eliminating the environmental impacts of any single use bags. Um, so this is sort of the crux of the whole bylaw. And uh, I think it's extremely important 
for business owners and people who are looking at the bylaw to see this as being the actual reason for the bylaw is that we want to change um, people's habits and um, going to be um, something that we'll be probably doing a lot going forward and what that we do all the time with other things like the complete streets program we're trying to change people's habits how they shop how they um, tra use transportation and so on so this is just stating it and as far as section four um, the 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 uh, bylaw had suggested removing uh, the definitions of the different types of bags that are going to be encouraged to be used but that suggestion would be moot if 5.2 remained because it references those types of bags. The, there was a suggestion that the definitions be removed because they weren't being referred to. So that would have made sense, but I am suggesting that we keep the definitions in um, because the language in the in 5.2 um, is true that it's aspirational, but again, it's necessary so that businesses can understand that the purpose of the bylaw is to change customer shopping habits. And they are being encouraged to contribute to that effort um, and encouraging residents and businesses to voluntarily change their habits is what the town's going to be doing in many ways, as I said, um, in the upcoming months and years to meet both zero waste and zero energy goals. So that section states customers are encouraged to bring their own reusable and biodegradable shopping bags to stores. Retail establishments may provide, and then they list biodegradable bags, reusable bags, compostable bags, or recyclable paper bags for free or for a fee as they so desire. So that's giving businesses the ideas. Okay, oh, so this is what this is, you know, what's the purpose? This is what the purpose of the of the bylaw is. So I would like to contribute, so I'm going to do this. Retail establishments are strongly encouraged to make reusable bags available for sale to customers at a reasonable price. So um, it's just um, stating the purpose, stating what businesses can do to encourage this. And I, of course, know that there is a, an executive order in place right now. So the all bans like this have been lifted temporarily until the COVID-19 uh, crisis is over. Um, I'm hoping that, that um, businesses find other alternatives uh, so that they don't have to use plastic bags, but um, but this would be for the period of time after the ban is uh, the the lifting of the ban is removed. Okay, um, Darcy, any more comments? I'm going to otherwise going to turn it over to for uh, I, just that just that I'm asking that the current, the, the existing language be replaced with this language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mandy Jo. Yeah, um, I just want to clarify because normally when we have bylaws, we get a um, sort of a track changes of what would change. So I just want to clarify with Darcy, I went to what we passed in January and then looked at this and I'm trying to clarify exactly what essentially is changing. You're adding looking at the one we've got in front of us that you just described, you're adding section A. Um, right. And, and then you're adding definitions two, three, four, and five. Five is sort of in the middle of the paragraph of four, which can be fixed, but you're adding definitions two, three, four, and five, and you're adding use regulation three. Is and that I, the only changes? I'm adding them to the, the current bylaw the current bylaw they they are what existed in the in the former bylaw 
Right, but, but I, I'm just trying to clarify, that's a, what we're considering is the addition of A, B2, B3, B4, B5, and C3 to the bylaw that was passed in January. I understand that they were in the bylaw before that. Yes. Okay. Without the track changes in front of us, do people feel comfortable proceeding with this? Um, that may be the fault of the chair, but um, uh, making sure that you have a document in front of you that you can actually follow. Mandy's obviously gone through it and pointed out the specific changes. I had a slightly different understanding of what this document was asking. Now I have a better understanding. Um, do people feel comfortable doing this without track changes in front of them? It's a question. Anyone? In other words, do you wish to proceed? It would be easier with track changes, but I was trying to get a sense of, given what the bylaw is, whether it's really necessary um, for this particular one. I think it's good practice because it makes it obvious to us and yes. explainable to the council as a whole. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I agree. Uh, I think it's important to get the bylaw clarified because the uh, to get it before the council uh, so that when the governor lifts the temporary exemption that we have the bylaw in the shape that the council wishes to have it and to get the council opportunity would be good so not to delay it until after the um, it, it's back and forth there was one formatting problem in definitions section. Um, when you go up there, Lynn, you'll see it that uh, four and five got put together in one paragraph and need to be divided back out. That's an editing question. I'll, I'll need the um, Word document to be able to do that. Right. Darcy. Uh, yeah, I just, um, if, if you want track changes, I could, you know, absolutely do that. But I think that, that the track changes need to show, they also need to show the original bylaw, which, and then the existing bylaw, and then the proposal. So it, I, I don't know if that can be done in one set of track changes, but it's basically what I'm what I am proposing is that most of it remained the way it was originally before, before it was amended by the bylaw review committee, um, except for the purpose section. So um, just if you are going to ask me to do something, um, it makes sense to me to somehow include the whole, you know, it's like three step process rather than two. George, Mandy Jo has her hand up. Uh, still, yes, Mandy, go ahead. Yeah, so that, it was a new hand. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll respond to that and then I'll, I'll state my comments on these changes. Um, the charter and our rules require track changes to be shown or the changes to be shown to be made to the current bylaw. So a three-step process is not what our charter requires. I understand, Darcy, that the changes you're asking for, or many of them were in the bylaw at some point, but they are not currently in the bylaw. So the charter in terms of presentation to the council would require us to show the current bylaw that is in effect and the changes to be made to that. I think any memo to the council could indicate what you're wanting to indicate in sort of attract changes, which is that um, the changes being requested were in a previous version of the adopted bylaw, but not the current version. But in terms of what gets presented to the council per the charter language and requirements of the charter and our rules of procedure, that would not be part of it. Um, as to the changes being requested, I'm okay with adding the purpose, but I don't think I can support adding um, the definitions in section C3, the use um, the new use regulations. Regulations are things that need to be done. 
Um, section C3 is nothing that could be enforced by the Board of Health at all. It's not a requirement. It's not a law. It's, it's, an, it's a suggestion. Um, and the whole thing of purpose, I thought, of the Bylaw Review Committee um, was to get rid of the suggestions out of the bylaws because they're not enforceable. Um, it's a suggestion to charge for money. It's a suggestion to make them available. It's a suggestion for customers to bring their own. Um, but nothing in that can be enforced. And so I don't think, I, I cannot support adding section C3 back into the bylaw because it's not anything legally enforceable. And so I see no reason to put it in the bylaw. And if that section is not added into the bylaw, you do not need to add definitions two, three, four, and five back into the bylaw. But I am totally okay with adding that short purpose in. Um, I think it's nice for bylaws to state a purpose right in there as long as it's brief um, and not pages long and, and brief and not, um, not something that goes out of date. The original one that you had, the findings and all of that is something that 20 years from now is not going to be accurate. But this purpose to reduce negative effects, to reduce contamination, to encourage bringing of reusable bags, um, you know, I, I, is something that is not going to change in 20 years, the, the reasons for it. So I'm okay with the purpose, but I can't support B2 through five or C. Okay, I see Pat's hand up, Pat. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at your deferment section and I'm wondering why there hasn't been some kind of limit put on the number of deferments um, an establishment could have. Um, this one looks like they could file year after year and, uh, and I would like to see some kind of limitations set in that. And uh, that's true of the foam bylaw too. Uh. Andy? Uh, I guess the history of this, um, <laughs> I was the select board liaison to the Recycling and Refuse Management Committee when that committee uh, decided to propose this original bylaw to the town meeting. And uh, the discussion that happened around the deferment section that was in the original bylaw had to do with um, transition concerns but it also had to do with um, sort of if there was a unique circumstance around a business that um, the business should be able to go to the Board of Health, which has fairly um, good track record of being a good enforcement agency and a good regulatory body and uh, that um, it would not be um, giving deferments lightly and but if there was good reason to give deferments because of the uniqueness of a particular type of business the product that it was selling um, the health nature of uh, the product and the use of the bags that uh, the feeling was to give something to the uh, board of health that would give them the ability to do what was in the health of the community's interest. Mandy. So, Pat brings up a good point. Um, should we ask the Board of Health whether any deferments are still currently in existence in either this one or the EPS bylaw? Um, we've had this one on the books for a while. Um, I, I know there was much more concern with the EPS styrofoam bylaw and deferments versus plastic bags um, in terms of cost. Is this something that maybe if we go to the Board of Health and see if they've granted any in the last year, say, um, for this one or EPS, and if they haven't, can we just delete the deferments and say, you know, the transition's over. Um, we don't need a deferment anymore. It hasn't been used for a certain amount of time. Let's remove it. Seems like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Andy, your hand is still up. Uh, do you have a comment? Uh, 
No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, as chair, I want to raise a process question. Um, our job is to determine this is clear, consistent, and actionable. And it, it just seems to me uh, quite understandably, but that we're straying into other areas of what we think about the bylaw as a bylaw in general and whether we would vote for it or not vote for it. And my understanding is our job is really just to make sure that this is in a form that, um, and some of the concerns have been raised definitely address this, but um, I don't know where the line is. And um, I think there is a line, so we may not even agree on that, but um, that our primary job is just to make sure that this is in the form that um, can then be sent to the council uh, for the kinds of discussion, some of the discussion we're having right, right now. Um, so I don't know where that line is. And maybe none of you agree with me that we might start, we're starting to cross it. Um, but I think we should have this in the back of our minds. Um, are we here to discuss the merits of this bylaw from the perspective of, you know, when we're finally on the council voting on it, we like this or don't like that? Or are we looking at it strictly as a uh, issue of, is this clear, consistent, actionable? Uh, Mandy's raised the charter, she's raised the rules of procedure, um, that those seem appropriate, obviously. Um, and, uh, but with deferments and some of these other things, I wonder if we're not getting into territory that's really not um, what we're supposed to be doing. And that's a question, um, but that's my feeling. Um, so before I recognize Darcy, I'm gonna recognize Mandy, um, and I'd also like to hear from my colleagues as to just uh, whether this is a concern to them. And if it's not, that's fine, we'll just proceed. Um, but that's one question I have. Mandy? So, you know, uh, I'm always willing to connect this back to clear, consistent, and actionable. Uh, I do think some of this is does relate to that. Um, mm -hmm. C3, the use regulations, I would argue is not an actionable part of a bylaw because there's no actionable part and right. if you and we right. on bylaws are seeking actionable and if if it's not actionable we shouldn't have a recommendation to put it through and enact right. it um right. and then that that goes back to the b parts that i argued um in terms of deferments i think we could make an argument that it would be if any request for deleting could potentially while you could argue it's substantive it's also a clarity and mm -hmm. consistency issue of once transitional provisions are no longer needed for consistency basis or clarity basis on our bylaws, we aim to remove them. Um, okay. You know, it's it, and so we could make that argument if this committee is okay with that. But I do think it it could we could find that it falls into that, especially if it has not been used in the last year. Okay. All right. Andy. So I guess that the uh, question on the deferment section is, um, it was the, the idea of going to the Board of Health and uh, the Health Department and asking them whether there have ever been any um, problems with enforcement or requests for defer, deferment, deferral for any reason whatsoever and what their general comment is about it from the health perspective, just to get an understanding. Um, I don't think that um, in the end, uh, it does more than provide information to it. It seems what we need to do is if we're not thinking that it has to do with actionability, that if we observe something, we can include our observations in the report, but it ought to not be part of our standard. Our standard is clear, consistent, and actionable. And anything else we observe um, is just reportable, but isn't okay. part of our decision. Uh, Darcy, you had your hand up there for a minute. Do, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, my initial um, suggestion to amend this was to some extent based on the fact that I felt that the bylaw review committee was also straying into 
content and that the you know the the effort and work that the original um, creators of this bylaw put into it um, needs to be honored um, and a lot of that is around the purpose to change people's habits um, and to not just to change residents habits but to change business habits and so the the um, um, the section where customers are encouraged to bring their own reusable or biodegradable bags and retail establishments are strongly encouraged to make reusable bags available that really goes to the original intent um, of the original authors and I have uh, you know, I really feel like that was straying into content as opposed to just looking at the form of the bylaws. Um, so uh, I would argue that we need to leave in the areas that suggest how we want to change people's behavior going forward in order to, you know, make us more environmentally friendly as a town. George. Pat, I'm sorry, okay. Lynn, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Lynn. Um, so I, first of all, I don't, I would like to defer action on this until we have pulled the following pieces together. And I'm sorry for maybe I'm a little anal on this, but I wanna see the original bylaw. I wanna see the red line bylaw and I want to see what's proposed. I want to see all three, and when we bring it to the council, even though our procedures do not require that, I want them to have all three just because I think it's better and easier to make people understand what they're voting on. Second of all, on the issue of the deferment, while I do think that's beyond what this committee is charged with doing, uh, it does seem to me that there are some reasons to consider it. And I want to raise a couple issues there. And when we bring it back to the council, we could bring it back with a recommendation, but, and even for that matter, we could even say, and if you change it, it's actionable, but the council still needs to look at that piece. However, I do want to raise the issue with that. Many businesses have been forced to go back after investing in a lot of different um, kinds of carrier carry bags, et cetera, et cetera, in the last six, you know, six to eight, three months, whatever. And now they have a stockpile of those. And so I think we may have to see people going all th through a whole nother one year deferment here, just to use up all of the stuff they've now invested in because of COVID. And because we may have a return in the fall, hopefully not, but looks like it. Um, that we may be a year or so in this process. And I think that the word hardship here is extremely important because these businesses are on the hairy edge to begin with. So I want to be careful what we do with the deferments issue. Okay. Pat. Um, thank you, Lynn. That was uh, a very good point. I am concerned um, about suggestions. Uh, I, there are a lot of things that I would like to see residents in Amherst do, and, um, and a lot of them I think are really wonderful, but I don't think they belong in bylaws. Um, and so I'm really uncomfortable with suggestions because they, do, they are not part of um, a bylaw. They should not be part of a bylaw. Okay. Um, I've got a couple, I'm hearing a couple of things here from the committee. I guess the first is, um, well, I'm hearing that, and please correct me, but people seem to be okay with the purpose section. I'm not spoken, but in fact, I would assent to that myself. Um, and I'm hearing that, but again, if you disagree, please raise your hand or speak up. Um, I'm hearing a movement towards a consensus about removing suggestions of language that is suggestive that is not uh, actually enforceable as a general principle of um, how we are like our bylaws to be written. 
And that then has, if that were to be moved forward, um, that would also take out um, uh, certain definitions. So um, that's not a very uh, precise description of what we've been hearing, but that's the general sense I'm getting is that there's some desire to make some changes to this um, along those two, along the line of suggestive language shouldn't be in here. And we would have to agree on what language is suggestive and it sounds like we might be able to. And if we were to agree that that should be removed, then um, I take it certain definitions would no longer be appropriate. That would also be removed. Um, is that a fairly broad but accurate description of where we're at at the moment? Pat, your hand is still up. I'm not sure if that is Yes, that no, no, I have it up for one minor point in Please. the, uh, Go ahead. in section A, the purpose. There is a, it says um, on single use plastic bags, it should say effects of single use plastic bags, very minor. Good. Um, and uh, I think your summation was good. Well, then that raises the question of, I'm um, sorry, um, Andy, go ahead. Andy, Andy you need to mute. Andy. unmute. Andy, unmute. Andy. Got it. Uh, Lynn, could you go back down a little bit on section C to the section we were talking about, which is suggestive. I think that the uh, question, and this goes partly to the sponsor, Darcy, um, I think that, that the point is well taken that um, customers being encouraged is not really a part of a bylaw because they are not subject to the regulatory authority that's being put forward. Uh, if it was um, intended that it be that retail establishments shall encourage their customers to use reusable or biodegradable shopping bags and um, provide such bags um, at a reasonable cost or something like that, then it would become a part of the bylaw because it would be something that was being expected of the retail establishment. Uh, and uh, so there's a uh, thought that that type of change should be considered that ought to be um, put into the process before we get too far down the line here and get it back to the council. Um, but if we're going to leave, if it stays as it is worded now, I think that Mandy's points are well taken that it is not something that is um, enforceable um, and therefore it really is not, doesn't belong as a part of the bylaw. Darcy. Uh, just a question for Andy. Are you suggesting um, that that if we change that section to make it a requirement, um, that then it would belong there? Re retail establishments um, are shall make shall shall make reusable bags available for sale to customers at a reasonable price. Um, and then it could say retail establishments may provide biodegradable bags, reusable bags, compostable bags, or recyclable bags for free or for a fee. I think that I would, I would you know, as a counselor um, in general, uh, if other communities have a provision like you just described and um, that I certainly would Think that we would want to talk about it, whether we want to be the first community to do it if nobody else has done it. Um, that would be information that we would want to know too, because we're putting an unusual then requirement on our um, business community. But it is certainly quite um, the piece that would could be explored as to how to go about uh strengthening the bylaw to do what you were thinking should be done 
so it needs some work, I think, to to need some research to figure that out. Uh -huh. Okay, Mandy. Yeah. So, um, from a GOL point of view, if use regulation C three, if the first line was deleted, the first sentence was deleted, and the next two used shall instead of are strongly encouraged or may. Um, then probably from an actionability point of view and a GOL review point of view, it would meet that test. Um, I, I would, though, at that point, I think echo Andy of then it becomes, is this something, then you become into the substantive review. And at that point, maybe the council needs to weigh in whether they want that to send off to another committee for that review or whether they can make that decision without that review at a council meeting. George? Yes, Lynn. Okay. Uh, I have, um, I like the idea of dropping that first line in three, in C3, and making the others mandatory, but I want to make it a, 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 an option that it does not have to be for a price. So in other right. words, the last sentence would mean read something like retail establishments are strongly encouraged to make reusable usable uh, bags available free or for sale so that if you know for instance you go to whole foods now they'll give you a paper bag technically that's reusable and they don't charge me but you go to big y and they do charge you so i don't want to eliminate the possibility that mm -hmm. they don't charge you okay um, I'd like to bring this to a uh, conclusion um, for the moment. When I'm hearing, and I'm, I'm speaking now to the sponsor, um, and, and she can weigh in as to what she would like to do, but um, it looks like some suggestions are made as to C3, that if she were willing to make them, this would at least uh, pass the, uh, the GOL test. And whether counselors ultimately would support it or not, it's a different question, but it would then be something that, and I assume then the definitions would still be appropriate? Yeah. Um, it sounds like the committee is satisfied with the uh, statement of purpose. There's a minor edit there that could be made, that should be made, um, but I'm not hearing any uh, concerns about that. Um, and I think uh, Andy had a comment about an edit at some point that I've lost now, but- um, It's right, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's right here. Um, Is it B4? Here, this needs to be brought out as a separate paragraph. Right. Okay, that's just it, right. Uh, so that, those are, that's a very minor point, but um, my suggestion would be, but this is open to obviously my colleagues thoughts that this go back to the uh, sponsor to make those decisions. And also it sounds like, again, people need to weigh in that this committee would like to see at least the uh, track changed version before we sign off on this. But again, Matt, you may say that we're, we're satisfied with what we've done today, but that would be the other request. And um, I could work with Darcy on that, but perhaps you don't need it. I, that's a question really. Do you also want to see um, a track change version. Uh, Lynn has made it clear, I think Lynn, maybe also Mandy, both of you made it clear that this, when it goes to the council, should, uh, that should be involved, that yeah, should be My included. point is that I think for the council to really understand what they're doing, right. we need to go back to the original bylaw, show what the recommendation was, and now show where we are. Right. For this committee, and, yeah, go ahead, Mandy. Okay. I would add that this committee should never ship anything back to the council after a clarity, consistency, and actionability review that is not in the form required by the charter or our rules of procedure for presentation to the council. Which means track change? It would be a track changes. I mean, you'd have to go back to the rules, but it's like, Line, striking and lining out those that would be deleted and putting in bold or a different color those words that would be added. I think that the charter has it specifically. I can look up the wording. Mm -hmm. um, right. 
Is this something that could be covered in the, the chair's report? Would that be, uh, Lynn, would that be sufficient? I mean, it sounds like there's, Absolutely. A, there's a little difference here between your view and Mandy's. Um, Mandy's pointing out that we were bound by charter provisions, but this could be addressed in the chair's report. I don't think we're disagreeing. I just think Good. Okay. I'm trying to just be, I'm trying to make sure that when things come to the council, exactly, I would prefer in addition to that, that it come as one memo and explain what the three attachments are and how they differ so that people are not sitting there trying to say, oh, is it this one, this one, or this one? I can help Darcy put that together, but okay. in whatever format it needs to go, and that's fine, Mandy, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. What does this committee want to do? Um, are you uh, satisfied with sending it back to the sponsor and then she would come back to us at a subsequent, perhaps the next meeting with um, the changes that she, uh, we assume will have made or whatever changes she's made. And we will look at it one last time. Um, what are your thoughts there? I'm asking anyone. That sounds good to me. Um, Darcy, how do you feel about that? In other words, do you have a clear sense of what uh, the committee is looking for or suggesting and that what we're asking you to do for the next time, uh, which I believe would also include a, a red IA uh, track changed copy? Yes. I, um, uh, when is your next meeting? Uh, it is May, it's on the agenda, May 20th. And I'm not getting the sense of, of a real time pressure here. So if you felt that was you've given all the other duties you have, I can put this on the agenda at your at your you know pleasure. So if you wanted to delay it further, you could. If you wanted to go on May 20, assuming that that our agenda suddenly hasn't become, and I don't think it will, but um, so May 20 is the next meeting, but you have freedom to 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 yeah, I might, I might ask for the meeting after that because of everything that's going on with TSO and because there's no urgency right now with this because of the fact that the right the COVID temporarily right. lifted but um, if if I could be on the agenda of two meetings from now that would be good what date would that be um hang on for a second I can tell you uh would be June 3rd okay June that's, 3. okay that would be good if that's good for you all all right, um, then I'm going to, uh, I, it sounds like Darcy's clear on what, uh, anything people want to add, anything else they would like her to do that I have not touched on or you feel is unclear. Um, she's going to make some changes to C3, um, a couple of minor edits, um, that would, and then the track changes. All right, okay, seeing, anyone? Thank you very much. Darcy, thank you. And we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you in uh, the Thanks, next Darcy. following meeting. Yeah. Right. Next item on our agenda is the uh, uh, sponsored by uh, uh, Mandy Joe on uh, noise bylaw. And um, first of all, I guess question for Mandy is whether she needs to have this up on the screen or whether what she needs to say is something she- I'm going to bring, bring it up myself. So all I'm right. going to share my screen with it. Thank you. So there should be it. I marked up the one you put in our packet with what the change would be. It's very simple. Um, I actually think it's probably outside of GOL's purview um, to discuss this change in any substantive way. Um, so I think what GOL might want to decide is a recommendation on whether to refer this back to um, whether to ask the council to refer it to another committee or whether it believes that it could just be discussed um, in a council meeting itself. Um, my section four, the red line section um, down here, yep. um, was added by the bylaw review committee to the bylaw when it got passed in January. It was not in the one that was in effect at the time the charter switched forms of government. Um, and so essentially, I believed that we shouldn't add those in without an actual discussion of whether we want voices prohibited, um, because it has no 
you know, loud and disturbed, you know, it, it, there's no time limits. Many of us are home now and we hear leaf blowers all the time and lawn mowers all the time. Um, but I, I didn't think we should tuck the addition of that for someone being able to call the cops on their neighbor using a leaf, a lawn service with a leaf blower um, into a wholesale revise and replace of bylaws. So I wanted a specific conversation on it. I don't actually believe that conversation probably belongs in a committee, but it, in passing all these bylaws got referred to this committee. Mm -hmm. But if this committee thinks they can discuss whether this section should be in or out, um, that's fine with me. Thoughts on this? Let me get my, lost my participants window here. Pat has her hand up. Yeah, sorry, Pat, go ahead. Um, I think uh, four should stay in. Uh, there is a time limit if you read uh, the section of uh, the unlawful noise prohibited. It says very clearly between the hours of 11 and 7 a.m. And there are exemptions for DPW vehicles and things who would be coming in to snowplow and things like that. I don't even know any landscape company that comes before 8 a.m. Um, so I don't agree that this should be removed, which isn't really part of this discussion for our committee. It does yep. need to come from another right. committee, yeah. which is bad. <laughs> no, okay. I, I can't reach over and, and smack your hand. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Andy. Yeah. Um, as I've looked at this uh, bylaw, the word especially in uh, A, unlawful noise is prohibited. Uh, Kind of an interesting word because what does that mean? What does that add to it? Uh, and uh, so I, I think that that's what uh, you get into also because uh, if it, uh, if 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 the noise limit was saying you can't use lawnmowers or leaf blowers uh, after eleven and before seven a.m it would be um, far different, but it doesn't really say that the way it's worded. Andy, that was exactly my concern, um, was the especially is only, that's more important than a 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., but it doesn't say a neighbor can't call some, call the cops for the use of a snow blower at 8 a.m. in the morning or a lawn, a leaf blower at 2 p.m. Um, and so that's why I wanted an actual discussion, but I still believe it probably belongs in a different committee, that discussion. So, um, uh, Andy, your hand's still up. Do you have further comment? Lynn's hand is up. Um, Lynn, hand. sorry, Lynn, I can't see you. Lynn, go ahead. Um, I actually would like this to be referred to another committee and open it up for further discussion as well, because this relates to rentals. And Pat and I, I don't know about others, are dealing with unbelievable problems in our district over noise violations and so forth to the point that I really just, I want to do whatever we can to clamp down on some of this because people are now in a situation where they can't even sell their homes because of the neighborhood they live in. So it's, okay. I, I, I want the whole thing referred back whether it's lawnmowers or whatever else. I'm hearing a, somewhat of a consensus towards, well, it, A, it doesn't really belong here, though we could certainly talk about it, I'm sure for hours, um, but um, that it should be referred. Question now is referred where? My initial thought was maybe just send it to the council and we could all sit around all 13 of us and discuss this, but oh perhaps not. <laughs> it would be wiser to have uh, five of us talk about it first. And so I would suggest TSO, but uh, what do people think? Um, where no, would you it's, like it's CRC. Um, CRC? Why? I hesitate to say as chair, but I do think it's community resources and not town services. This has this nothing has to do with town services. I'm thinking neighborhoods, but okay, fine. I, I don't, I have no strong feeling. Andy? No, I agree with the um, 
provision, the, uh, the idea of sending it to another committee that can talk about the substantive pieces that we've been discussing. There is one other noise issue, and I just wanted to at least uh, make sure that as we send it along, um, that it doesn't get lost. Towards the end of existence of town meeting, there was a, uh, a petition article before one of the town meetings about doing something um, to regulate, if possible, the gun um, fire noises um, that affect South Amherst residents uh, near that gun range that exists on uh, as you go up the notch. And um, there was quite a uh, vocal um, statements from residents, including as far as over at Applewood about that particular issue. There was also some legal problems that had to do with uh, state legislation that may make local regulation illegal. But uh, as we're getting back into noise, I think we owe it to the original petitioner of that article and the people who were supportive of it at the time in town meeting to make sure at least somebody uh, follows through on that thread. So I just add that as a note to whatever committee this gets referred to. Okay. Um, my understanding of process, and I know will be corrected uh, promptly and, and rightly, is that this then goes back to the council and it's the council's job to refer it somewhere else. In other words, it would be our recommendation to the council. They refer this to CRC. We do not have the authority to refer anything to anybody. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. So um, it should go back to, to the council, but I would like to make sure that it goes back with the essence of this conversation, including the firearms. Thank you, Andy. Um, and um, you know what brought it he, brought brought it to us originally, and what additionally have we discussed? And then when we put it on the um, calendar or when we put it on the agenda, we'll probably put it on a, as a consent item, just right. because it's just going to be a quick referral. Many okay. of you agree? Um, Mandy. Yeah, I, as, as sponsor of the one that was trying to get rid of lawn leaf blowers and all, I, I it might be nice if we vote to recommend it go back. I mean, I guess it stays in this committee for clarity, consistency, depending on what there, but a vote, a recommendation that, you know, the a vote from this committee that recommends that this bylaw be considered by whichever committee I think would be helpful um, to have um, since it was just referred to us um, with everything Lynn said. I'm going to read because because we might want that vote to include which committee. So town services has um, review and make recommendations to the town council on measures that may affect the provision of services to the community by a town department and review and make recommendations to the town council on measures related to public ways. Um, everything else is sort of participation in community events. The CRC charge is review and make recommendations related to, um, there's community sustainability initiatives, housing and homelessness, planning, zoning, land use, um, master plan, support the local economy of Amherst. Um, you know, it, it does arts and cultures, neighborhoods and housing. The purpose for CRC is long-term economic vitality and quality of life in Amherst, um, including neighborhoods and housing. So I, I think CRC is probably given those the more appropriate committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. TSO's purpose is day-to-day -day provision of services by government and relations between the town and the community. Everything on with everything on TSO's plate, I don't think they're going to argue for it. No, um, I think Mandy makes a good point. Um, so what I'm hearing, and perhaps we do want to have a motion. Then the motion would be that this committee uh, is what recommending to the town council that they refer this. Uh, matter to community resources committee. That would be the motion. Okay. I'll, I'll move that. Okay. I'll so Mandy, I'm sorry, Mandy has moved it. Lynn has seconded it. 
And so, um, uh, is there any further discussion? Questions, comments? Okay. So we need to do a roll call vote. So we'll begin. Andy has his hand up. Andy has his uh, hand up. No, that's Put your hand down, Andy. <laughs> What's your question, sir? I don't. Uh, go, go ahead. Oh, certainly. Okay. No, I just. All right. So I'm going to proceed then to a vote on this motion. Uh, Pat DeAngelis? Yes. Um, Lynn Griesmer? Yes. Um, Mandy Jo Haneke? Yes. Uh, the chair is yes. George Ryan. Uh, Andy Steinberg? Yes. All right, so the vote is five to zero with, uh, uh, right, unanimous that uh, we will recommend to the council that they um, refer this to CRC and that the chair is instructed to put in his report for the next council meeting, um, or at least when this will be on the agenda, a brief description of this discussion and how this matter came to us. Okay. It, it can go on the 18th. The 18th. Okay. Okay. Good. Mandy, you're still up. If you'd be kind enough, uh, I'd like to go to item four. We have a proposal which Mandy has is, is, is kindly put together and uh, can be up on the screen, I hope, um, to make it. Be up there now. It is, thank you. And uh, change to the rules of procedure related to consent agenda. And again, Mandy, if you take the lead on this. Yep, so I was I agreed to draft potential rules regarding the consent agenda to put into our rules of procedure. Um, and so right now we're looking at the change in the agenda item order that would specifically put consent agenda as a separate agenda item instead of thrown into action items where it's been now. Um, that would move it in front of resolutions and proclamations um, so that any all consent agenda action items are dealt with before you get to them on the agenda so that if they're then removed from the consent agenda, they can just be plugged right into where they are without having to skip an item. Like we've been doing sometimes when resolutions were on the consent agenda, we kind of skip over it and then maybe go back to it. Um, so that's 4.2. And then I'm adding, I suggest adding a completely new section 4.6 entitled consent agenda to explain it. Um, and so that's what this one does. Um, it talks about different councils that I could tell and different sets of rules had different um, lengths of this descriptive section. Some put it directly under the agenda item in what would be our 4.2. They described what certain agenda items would be in the list of agenda items. Um, so, but we haven't really done that. So I put it out as 4.6. Some were more extensive than others. Um, most all included sort of what is in the first paragraph, what the point of a consent agenda is and what should be on there in terms of routine non-controversial. That was nearly in everything I could find. The second large paragraph, which is the examples, um, was in some, was in others was different in each one. I tried to combine it because I thought it might be nice to have examples. Um, I think some of the important thing that are in this one um, is the ineligible items, the things that can't go on a consent agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and those are basically the ones I put there and, and there's sort of a mirror to the in addition appropriate items include these things. But um, that anything with high amounts of public interest or controversy do not belong on a consent agenda, even if they came out of the council committee with a unanimous vote. Um, and any item that comes out of a council committee without a unanimous vote does not belong on a consent agenda. And I think it's important to state that somewhere, um, you know, because a consent agenda is supposed to be something that all voting members want to vote yes on. Um, and so then I described a couple of other things about discussion and debate. Some included this, some didn't. Um, I included it because I thought it was nice to say, hey, if you have a simple question, you don't have to pull it off the consent agenda in order to ask that question. The whole purpose of consent agenda is to move things forward quicker. A quick question, if you're pulling it off consent agenda, actually slows down the meeting if it can be answered quickly. So those things can stay on the consent agenda for that short clarification question. Um, 
and then it, it repeats the voted and, and adopted as a single motion. And then it talks about how you remove, which I think is important. It's similar, it's kind of follows Robert's rules that only one person needs to ask to remove. Um, but I did explicitly put in here that it must be removed if someone wants to vote no on an item that, you know, I think it serves two purposes that way to clarify that, yeah, we're not, um, that if you want to vote no, that's what you should do. But to clarify to the counselors and the public from the, from, from my vice president and maybe even Lynn's president point of view, the goal of the consent agenda is not to push through things that we think might not get unanimous vote if they're not on the consent agenda, but to give them unanimous vote, it's to try and speed up the meeting. And we're only guessing at what we think might have a unanimous vote. And if it's not going to, it should be removed. So that, that was sort of what I was thinking as I wrote these rules. Okay. All right. Um, first of all, thank you, Mandy, very much for doing this. Um, I think it's important that it be done. Um, any thoughts, first of all, on the first uh, suggestion, which is at the top, name of its place in the order of the agenda? Any thoughts on this? Any objections, concerns, questions? That seems okay. So we're all right with that. Um, as for the addition 4.6, um, why do it paragraph by paragraph? What are people's thoughts? Might be simplest. Um, first paragraph. Any concerns about the wording or the intent? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to the next larger paragraph. I'll give you a moment to look at it. But again, any concerns about wording, language, intent? Seeing and hearing none, I'm willing to move on to the next paragraph. The next paragraph is just one sentence. And then the final paragraph. That's where I have my hand up. Please, Andy, go ahead. Uh, it was interesting when you had uh, the presentation, Mandy, and by the way, I think you did a great job. It's obvious because we're not saying much. Uh, the, you, at the very end of your comment, you got to my concern, which is, why are we using the um, word must in that last sentence as opposed to should? As I was explaining it, I realized it said must and it probably said shall, it probably should be shall. Yeah. Yeah, because when I read it, um, my notes uh, on it would have changed it to should. With that, I'm going to take my hand, up, lower my hand. I'm going to, I'm going to recommend at some, some point in the future we have a, in, in another world, we have a GOL retreat, perhaps in a really nice location where we discuss shall, <laughs> must, should, may. Just, you know, we'll have a series of speakers from philosophy, English, uh, linguistics, uh, so that we can finally figure out. What, and then we'll publish a dictionary. <laughs> My guess is that's the only one I missed when I was copying from other rules of procedures. <laughs> so the problem is uh, actually uh, you can't enforce it because if somebody really wanted to vote against, um, you know, it's, uh, you, you can't have forced them to right. say it. It's really an encouraging statement. 
so that that's why I changed it to should because I felt that that really gets to what it is that you're saying to the counselors that hey guys if you want to vote against this do something about it this is where you should do something so I, I was uh, deliberate when I picked the word that I was recommending. So I've moved it to should. Good, thank you. Any other changes, comments, concerns? I think this is terrific. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, well done. I'm, I move that we recommend that the town what uh, you tell me how you make your motions, George. I'm sorry. Uh, exactly. No, that's a you raise a good question, and that's why I'm glad Mandy is on this committee and still is on this committee. But um, my understanding is we first have to declare this clear, consistent, and actionable. Is that true? And then secondly, we would then recommend to the council that they adopt it, or can we just do it as a single motion? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for rules motions, we've rules amendments that originate from GOL, we've never done the declare them clear, consistent, and actionable. I think we've just recommended the yeah. adoption of this. Okay. The and they assume we, we, we follow our own right. <laughs> <laughs> they assume that we look at it with that keen eye, which is true, we do. All right, so somebody word the motion, and I'll make it. <laughs> okay. Um, the motion would be that GOL recommends that the town, town excuse me the town council adopt um the follow the amendment how we're we going to put this adopt I the revisions to, revisions to rule. um, rules 4.2 and 4.6 right. regarding consent agenda right. so as um, amended this day yeah so um and then on the May 18th, oh, I make that motion. So the motion has been made. Second. And Pat has seconded. And the motion is that we are recommending to the town council that they adopt. Again, if we had our, um, if we were face to face, it would be easier to do. I just like the motion read out. Um, in full, but we're recommending that the town council adopt, how do you put it, Mandy, changes to? Just to Yeah, the to, revisions to- Revisions to- I guess it's the revisions to section 4.2 and right. addition of section 4.6. To the rules of procedure as- uh, Amended. Amended on this date. Yeah. And Nancy, do you have all of that? Nancy, you need to unmute to tell us if you have all of that. Okay, I unmuted you. Okay. Nancy, do you have all of that? Let's assume somebody, one of us has it then. So the motion, go ahead, George. Yeah, um, I'm trying to write it as I speak. Um, I will word it, get the wording correct in a moment, but the motion is before us. It's been seconded and um, I would like to move to a vote. So I'm gonna ask a roll call vote. Uh, Pat, uh, how do you vote? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Andy Joe? Yes. Uh, the chair votes yes. Andy? Yes. All right, so the vote is 5-0 to recommend the town council, and I will get the language corrected. Um, all right. Uh, um, we'll decide later today whether we're going to put this one on this consent agenda or for the purposes of making counselors understand it, we feel it needs to go on the regular agenda. Yeah. Yeah. But on May 18th, definitely. Okay, May 18th. Okay. All right, we're on to item six. Uh, I'm sorry, item five. GOL process to fill upcoming vacancy for non voting members of the Finance Committee. Is 
there is a document um, in the uh, in your packet on SharePoint, and uh, let's see, how it is entitled "Proposed Process for GOL Recommendations." Okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to go through this with you section by section, um, hopefully fairly quickly. My feeling, and this is just the chair speaking with his own opinion, is that OCA has established a fairly robust and successful process. I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. Um, on the other hand, the process is up to us. So if the committee members feel differently, um, we can reinvent the wheel or design something totally new. Um, but uh, what I have suggested and what we're following at the moment is the process that OCA used um, to fill this position the first time out. And it occurred to me upon reflection that um, while it is cumbersome and labor intensive, um, the uh, only uh, position that this document really refers to and is relevant to, in my understanding, is uh, resident appointments to the Finance Committee. All the other uh, uh, recommendations of appointments involve uh, staff or town council and don't seem to uh, really fall into this sort of detailed process. And, and right now, I have no idea what the process would be for many of those, but they certainly wouldn't be this elaborate or this public. So my thought right up from the start, if we go to the title page, is that this would, this document, if we do agree to adopt it or some version of it, would be specifically for um, recommend appointments of non-voting residents to the Town Council Finance Committee. Um, so um, that is the first, it's, that's the only thing this is about. It, there has to be a date problem here. Uh, yeah. In what sense? Oh, you mean the date here? Yeah. yeah. Um, those that's yeah that that will be changed when we finally do if we do agree to adopt this document um, the uh, we'll say based on local process and then adopted by GOL on whatever date okay that's what I would suggest um, so that's the first question are people comfortable with that in other words this process really is just for one uh, kind of appointment and so we just the wording should reflect that Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Vacancy. Um, again, what the only change I would suggest is um, uh, it's here. When a vacancy or impending vacancy occurs on the finance committee for a non-voting resident member, so that's 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 good. Um, otherwise, I have no changes to this section. If people are happy with it. Um, yeah, go ahead, Lynn. It seems to me it's, I mean, maybe this is just how we refer to terms ending, but it's a term, it, the vacancy may occur because someone resigns or it may occur because someone's term is up. Right. So that was the impending vacancy last sentence. Right, that's the last sentence. Yeah. And I impending see. vacancy okay. occurs, yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. Yeah. So um, this is the language Oka used, and um, that would be the vacancy section. People are okay with that? Yes. Okay. So I have my hand up, I just took it down. The reason I did is, it struck me as I was going through this that it may not belong in this particular document, but I think that uh, there ought to be some consideration given as somewhere as to whether there's a requirement that to serve on the finance committee, you need to be a resident of the town of Amherst. And there is no such provision that I can find anywhere. It was not included in the charter. Charter doesn't require that, but uh, I think that that may have been um, an oversight, I think, and I think the council 
could make that requirement and where would that go if we were going to have that discussion mm -hmm. uh, and decided it should be a resident then where does it go and if somebody leaves the town then they no longer would qualify good question This document is pretty much assumes that, um, it does assume that any member would be a resident of the town of Amherst and if they did in fact leave the town, they could no longer serve on the committee. But Andy's point is that's nowhere actually said explicitly. Um, Mandy Jo, do you have access to your charter real quick? I can pull up the charter. I just pulled up our rules of procedure. Um, they don't say anything about resident. Um, I can pull up the charter too. Yeah, the, I thought it did. So the rules of procedure relating to non to non voting members was the finance committee may include members of the public who shall have a voice but no vote in the finance committee's deliberation per charter section 5.5 .5, the council not the president is the appointing authority and section 5.5 .5, um, says finance committee. Um, this part is, where is it? Um, the finance committee may include members of the public who shall have a voice but no vote in the finance committee's deliberation. Council rules shall address the appointment of such members. So if we wanted to limit it to residents, we would do it in our rules, in the council rules, not the GOL rules. So it sounds like just a, a minor change to the rules of, this is the council rules of procedure, correct? Yeah, it would have to be in the council rules of procedure. And, but that wouldn't be very difficult to do. And we could, we could even do we that. We could propose um, that change as GOL. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. In our free time, we could just slip it in. But and, and Andy, go. were you advocating for it to be residents only or were you advocating for that restriction to not be there? I actually thought it should be there, uh, though I would welcome other discussion about that. I think it was an assumption that we made um, right. in the last round, but uh, it was never really, it's never really been explicitly discussed or stated anywhere. In the charter, um, other multi-member bodies that are appointed by the town manager, there has to be a specific vote of the council to um, acknowledge that you're, you're having a non-resident member of a committee. Um, as I recall, I don't have it right in front of me, mm -hmm. but we did, it, it, the charter doesn't do that for this particular provision. Um, I think that the um, uh, I would I would think it ought to be there, but um, it's my opinion alone. Well, certainly the language of this document uh, just simply assumes that they must be residents. And your point is that that's actually nowhere said. So either we take the language out of this document, um, which I'm not keen to do, or we take some time, either this meeting or perhaps better at a subsequent meeting, but soon, and suggest a change to the rules of procedure that would then solve that problem. Yeah, I mean, or the vacancy is, uh, ceases to be a member or ceases to be a resident mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll so be we, added as well you could just some way to to address it uh, and it we don't need to do it for this particular round um, if our goal is to recognize that we have a position that expires uh, on June 30 and we want to um, go ahead and have a reappointment process. We need to do whatever we can to move that along. Okay. All right. Um, can we move on to item two? Which is going to create a little bit of its own challenge. Um, so Why are we having a requirement members uh, seeking reappointment must also submit a new CAF? 
Well, actually, uh, Oka is revisiting that issue. Right. <laughs> Can you um, go and so for that, our whole new section two? I'm sorry? Oka at, the la at Monday's meeting presented an entirely new section two that they approved, right? Right. Um, and so I would advocate for keeping that section, which was they're good for three years and reappointments don't have to reapply. That's why I raised right no exactly um mm -hmm. and so yeah if, that makes um, sense yes i think that does make sense um so we're substituting this whole section yes yes it with was the new language rewritten, right george i'm sorry section two was pretty much fully rewritten right uh pretty much so what i can i mean again i wasn't comfortable with uh, inserting it because <laughs> it's a it's hot off the presses and b um we can do whatever we want uh, we could keep this language, we could come up, you know, we're not bound to follow, um, you know, what OCA does. And knowing the members of OCA, as I do quite well, um, you know, that's something you should give serious thought to. Um, do you really want to follow these people? Um, I, um, I think what I can do is... Consistency across every committee uh, on the, in terms of CAFs. Exactly, I agree, I that, that I agree. makes the most sense. So it would be three years and I could insert the language of OCA's as suggested change. Um, just as a sidebar, it turns out that the current member um, I have reached out to um, is planning to submit a new CAF anyway, um, because having had, she said, some experience on the body, she has more thoughts on it. Uh, however, she's not decided if she's going to actually uh, submit or whether she's uh, going to continue. But she said, I'm going to submit a new CF anyway. I didn't have the heart to tell her that Oak is also considering another change that we'll get to in just a moment. Um, so I just left it, let it lie. So I will insert the language of Oka here. Sounds like people are happy with that. Three years and not requiring um, uh, someone to resubmit within that three year period though not forbidding them either, obviously. Right. Okay, um, three, sufficiency of applicant pool. I think it just needs updated because of number two's changes, in I'm my sorry. opinion. Number three does, or? Yeah, so number three refers to, it, OCA had a few changes in number three that directly related to the changes in number two. Yeah. And so I would support those changes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So again, we would follow the OCA process here. Is that, I, I'm hearing mm -hmm. that that's consensus? Yeah. Okay. Um, selection guidance. Um, again, this is OCA's uh, language uh, with GOL inserted. Any concerns, problems with this language? Notice it does have language on term limits. Oka, of course, went back and forth on this a great deal, and this was the compromise language that I think most of us were satisfied with. It didn't rule out term limits, but it, it, it set certain expectations. Are people happy with that? George, um, yep. I had concerns about Section A, the healthy... Multi-member body? It's not planning board or ZBA, it's the Correct. finance committee, five of whom are our fellow counselors. Right. So in reading that we're appointing non-voting members, um, yep. many of the sections here, one, two, and three, to me seemed very strange from that point of view. Um, you know, I don't know what healthy means in regard to a body that we're five of us are, I, I don't know how right. to word it here, but you know, right, right. I just seasoned member, I, I I just didn't know how it really truly applies to finance committee. Yeah. Um, my inclination was to scrap section A completely and just rely on input from the body's chair, from finance's chair. Um, okay. Including term limits. Including term limits. Mm. Can I also I mean, suggest because in theory, that the counselors may not have term limits. You could have a counselor that serves on the council for 30 years and they might be on finance for all 30 years. Um, right. But this document only refers to the non, -re non the resident non-voting members. It says nothing about uh, counselors. Right. 
it, so the language I think is pretty clear that this is just right. Um, I'm not arguing for or against, but I'm just saying this language is not applied to counselors at all. No, I know. Um, right. It just seems strange that it will apply to only a portion of the committee. Right. No. Not when you're talking about entire body, right. Yeah. So, George, then, one of the things that also I think needs to be brought into this, and that is the way we have it set up now, somebody can be appointed in this next term, and that person will succeed into the next council. Right. And which, you know, the next council may or may not want to continue the practice and they may or may not want to continue the person. So as we look at this section, there's a whole part of me that feels like we're tying the hands of the future councils. And the future finance committees, but that is the council. And I mean, in many ways, the charge uh, are the whole uh, char portion of the charge that in, at, that refers to resident um, members of finance ties the hands of future councils. And so there's a part of me, I don't like that. It actually was discussed at the uh because the Finance Committee, when it had its discussion about changes to the committee charge at OCA's request, right. um, we, uh, one of the members of the committee who is actually um, a resident member brought up the thing about um, the uh, terms and uh, the benefit of longer terms. And I think that the discussion that ended up happening at OCA was just right along the lines that Lynn was suggesting. Mm -hmm. And then it would rot. Yeah. It, it would require that we actually go back and relook at the charge. So uh, again, what I'm hearing here is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I may be that, um, whole section A, you would like removed, like Mandy. Am I understanding that? Yeah, I would. And, and, I, I, and I'm also going to just voice my opinion. I feel that the terms of people on the finance committee, the, not, the resident non-voting members, right. could be coterminous with councils. So, council so the charge, the charge is term of appointment was two years for non-voting members. Um, I think we've got the problem because we're kind of off cycle. Um, right. But I think, I there think was, that was to be coterminous. There was an argument made for the opposite view in the sense that um, to give some continuity from one uh, finance committee to the next, right. that there would be some people around, I mean, Hopefully there will be continuity, but it's perfectly possible you could have an entirely new finance committee. And the thought was by making at least some of the uh, resident members not coterminous, you would have at least some institutional memory and some expertise. Um, so that was the argument against having them. Um, and in that sense, tying the hands of a future council in a sense is true, but we might actually kind of like that idea. <laughs> um, I like that idea. In the sense that, you know, especially for a committee where expertise, uh, you know, some kind of background experience, da 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 da. So anyway, that's the argument for not coterminous. Um, so there are two very different views on this one. Um, this is one of those situations where I could argue both ways. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure it applies to this question, though, about select the selection guidance. It's a right, different right. question. That's a different, a different issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. except yeah, for course. the fact that in here it says well, that person will be given preference. Right. Um, 
And again, there's an argument that's been made, um, and I've resisted it, but I'm, I'm beginning to weaken a bit, is that um, there is a case, a good case to be made for not letting people serve on a body, you know, basically indefinitely. And that six years seems like a reasonable period of time. Um, and beyond that, while it's not forbidden, there is a sense of a preference for. This is just guidance. It doesn't say you can't do it. And I certainly made the case in another context uh, that uh, based on this description, I said, no, I think this is still a mistake. We should not follow the, the, the guidance here in this case for good reason, but uh, I was uh, outvoted. Um, so this is just guidance. It doesn't say you have to, it just says this is, but again, we may decide the five of us that we just don't want to provide any kind of guidance in terms of term limits at all. We'll just leave it uh, undis unstated. Um, which would be the case if we take it out. I'm a little uncomfortable with that, but- Pat has her hand up. I'm sorry? Pat has her hand up. Sorry, Pat, go ahead. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable with removing uh, everything in this section. I don't think it should be called criteria for a healthy multiple member body, but the term limit uh, three is, I think, an important one, particularly for finance. So I agree with you, George. Andy, did the finance committee of the town of town um, meeting have term limits, didn't they? Never very strictly enforced. Uh, so if it stays in, and I still don't want it to, but if it does, it should not, it needs updated because they're not three years in length for finance. And since it only you. applies to finance, they're, right. they're they need, terms definitely. two years in length. Yeah, yeah. And we could say, probably delete the special training or expertise language. Right. Was that put in for finance or was that really ZBA and planning? ZBA and planning. Well, it's true for finance. It is, yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, again, it's just guidance, but I hear you that this language needs to be revised substantially um, to, to fit the particular committee, the one and only committee that we are dealing with. So if we're going to keep A3, yeah. I would propose that the length of service is normally limited to three two-year terms, two years in length, so that a person can actually be there for six years. Okay. This is accepting your term, your argument, George, and that is that, you know, we may end up with a town council with limited financial expertise. Um, and in many ways, these members may be helpful in smoothing through that process. Lynn, do you want to make this a, a hard and fast rule? In other words, six years and out, or do you want to keep no, the line? No, this is generally. It, it's it's in this. It's in the normally limited to. Yeah, it's okay. in the spirit of general guidance. Yeah, we're it's sort of in a very peculiar place right now in the fur because we're going through this the first time. Um, as I've thought about it, if a uh, member of the finance committee who's a counselor was not running for re-election to the council for whatever reason, or was not re-elected to the council, because that's the voter's decision, but um, was willing to continue on the finance committee, that might be um, a reason to bring that person in as a resident member because of their expertise, that person's expertise. So, you know, that could be a future consideration of a future council and how to use these positions. That's true. Remember the point of this document is simply to give us guidance and future uh, committee members guidance in how to go about this uh, recommendation process. Um, and so there's going to be a, a fair amount of latitude um, that obviously this should be in here. Um, but I'm hearing one and two people would maybe like that removed and three um, revised. 
but 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 have some direct have some acknowledgement of the idea of term limits and the language revised to reflect the reality um, with a thought that six years would be normally considered to be the limit, though it's not impossible to go beyond that. What about one and two? Mandy, I think, feels that they both really are not appropriate. Um, do you want me to try and construct some language that would be particularly appropriate to finance? Do you feel that, that we just don't need this? Um, because obviously the input from the chair, um, we've also gotten input from the committee on what they're looking for. And some of that language I uh, could easily incorporate into this um, as, as generic language uh, as part of, of A. Um, and I agree the title of A needs to be changed, but I could incorporate some of that language in there along with the revision of three. And then uh, B would be input from the finance committee chair. Um, would that be, I mean, what do people feel about one and two? They want them out, they want... Uh... I'm sorry, I just screwed up there. That's all right. Um, So I'm the one that said delete. I'm not going to, if, if everyone else is okay with them, I'm not gonna put up a big fight. Well, the right. question is how helpful is this to us? A strong base of seasoned members who have completed or nearly completed one term as a member. These members bring an understanding of process, institutional knowledge, can mentor new members, take on leadership roles. That's actually not appropriate to this body. They're not being asked to take on a leadership role. They don't even have a vote. Um, so right. That language has to come out. Um, do you feel it's important? I mean, is that something that you would have in your mind choosing someone for this committee? Is that helpful guidance? If it is, we should leave it in, but with some changes or should maybe we should just take it out. And then, so it's a distinction between, I mean, here we're thinking of multiple member bodies um, where obviously the individuals will play a leadership role. Um, that's not the case in this body. Uh, newer versus older members. Um, how important is that? Maybe this needs some more more work, and I we can't do it in, at this right. point because it's not really uh, criteria for a healthy multi-member body. We're talking about criteria for select resident members of the finance right. committee. Right, right. So I need and, to give this right, and I would work the criteria then uh, go back and look at it because what we really were saying at the beginning was people who have, and it's elsewhere in it, people who have experience in municipal finance or experience with um, our town's budget process who can contribute to the um, understanding of the committee yeah. and um, the process that we had yeah. in the last round selected three people who have that criteria because yeah. two of prior members of the prior finance committee. And the third person um, is somebody who had exceptional experience in municipal finance issues, but not within the town. Right. And I have language to that effect, which came from your committee, uh, Andy, that I could put into this section that we could then review next time and, and do with it what we will. But it would seem to be far more useful to us, language like that, rather than one and two. Um, mm -hmm. Three, I think, I feel still needs to stay in some form. And then we would certainly seek input from the body's chair. And maybe that's all it would say. Right, and, and three, you also have to change the word if a person is completing a third term. Right, right. We change that. Right. Okay, well, I'm hearing here is that, that clearly this is going to need a little bit of work by the chair and then put back in the packet for your review at the next meeting. Are there other areas, however, George, we'd like to discuss now? With this, I think we do need to say if we have a moment to talk about interviews and whether we want them or not. So, I, Oka again added a statement of interest. Yes. Part, I think it's important. Personally, I would like to see that added to this one. Right. And given that, I'm not sure. I'm I'm indifferent about actual interviews. If we do a state a solid, strong statement of interest with potentially 
questions attached to that statement of interest. So it's not just a free form essay. It's directed questions to mm -hmm. answer specific questions. We might be able to skip the interview completely. I, I have to also say when giving somebody a non voting position, putting them through an interview seems a little pompous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I think I actually wrote all the same thing. Since these are non-voting members, I'm less likely, less inclined to need an interview for it. Right. You know, at the same time, I do like the idea of a statement of interest, um, and a, and you know, it'll, along with revisions to the CAF. Um, on the other hand, you know, having not been engaged in these interviews the last time, I guess. In fact, the last time they were only done by one person, weren't they? They weren't done as a group interview. That's right. 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 And even the OCA process, the interview is the questions are asked by one person and there's no um, back and forth. There's no follow up. Again, we, we don't have to follow that process. But right now I'm hearing at least some th thought that we don't need them at all. A statement of interest. Um, where we have given them a sense of what we expected to contain um, might be sufficient for our task. And that would certainly um, ease the burden on the applicant and also on the committee. I guess the only question is just from the political perspective, um, and Manny makes a good point about these are non-voting members, how important is it that um, there be some kind of public process other than the committee's um, public meeting? It, it does, it, having a public process removes the accusation of politics. Mm -hmm. Removes part of it, excuse me. Um, it doesn't remove all of it. And I have to say, given the three people that we ended up with, the fact that I did not know one of them at all, um, would he have emerged in a um, statement of interest? I don't know. Mm -hmm. His statement of interest probably would have uh, enabled him to say the same things that he said during the interview that impressed, uh, uh, I don't know who it was, it was Darcy. Darcy. Uh, but you know, she was impressed by his statements about uh, what he could contribute. Um, as this quote flashes back to me, the whole last process, I was feeling that it would be very helpful once Darcy had recommendations to have a conversation with the with me as finance committee chair at that time about um, just do you um, have any questions about how the committee functions and what the role of a resident member um, is envisioned to be and what you can contribute in uh, Sort of those expectations kinds of questions and i ended up uh, with a process that was sort of understood and agreed to <clears throat> that i would attempt to talk to the people i talked to two out of three members uh two out of three of the people and um, it was a very healthy and good conversation third person was uncomfortable with the idea of having such a conversation and we just went ahead and um, elected that person, that third person at, at the council level and it all worked out fine. So, uh, but it, it, that kind of conversation is helpful, but it's not an interview. You know, maybe we wanna make interviews optional. So that if, for example, you know, suppose we get seven and, you know, some members of the committee know more of them than others. And then we begin to start seeing partisanship or something like that. So maybe we at least want to have the option of interviewing, but also not a requirement. And Andy, I think that some of the issues that you then wanted to ask the nominees um, I think we can make sure that those are more in the questions 
um, then maybe they were. And if it's a group interview, you know, it's um, there's more people listening. I'm going completely opposite than what I was saying before. No, I know. It's all right. It's, yeah. Yeah, kind of maybe it's this is the time to, maybe this is an important, seen as an important position to pe by people in town, a place to kind of test their wings as potentially future council people. Yeah, I mean, there, I can give you an example of the question that I, I applied with the two people that I did speak with. And that was, um, this is very heavy burden during the month of May um, under normal circumstances, this year not being one of them, when, because that's when we uh, have the town manager's budget, they have to make a decision on it. Is there anything in your life that happens during the month of May that would limit your participation at the busiest period for the committee? Um, and uh, the answer, came back from the two people that I did speak with, no, it's not a problem. And I, I felt like the third person was likely to have said the same thing. You had your hand up. Um, no? I'm taking it down. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I don't need to comment right now. Okay. Um, I want us to move on, but um, this, uh, Let's be honest here. I think part of the reason for the public interview is because it, it was, I don't think it's part, it was because it was planning board and ZBA. And so we are dealing with a very different body. Um, for instance, I don't see why we, if we had interviews, why we couldn't have a back and forth. There were reasons uh, that that was not a good idea for ZBA and planning. But here, I, I don't see why they do have interviews. I don't see why they have to be um, as, as, you know, we also could just designate one member of this committee to to speak, and it could be different members. You know, Mandy could speak to one, I could speak to one, da da da, and just uh, you know informally talk, interview them in that sense. I don't see why that's a problem. Um, the current process, is the OCA process, for two bodies that are highly contentious and political in our town, and this is the fact. Um, and so that's why we ended up with the process we ended up with. Um, it was felt as a compromise that this was uh, the best way to have, to, for some to be transparent and public, blah, blah, blah. Fine. Is that necessary for this? Do we need to go through uh, the entire nine yards of creating interview? We're going to have to, you know, do the interviews, uh, public interviews. Everybody has to be present at the same time. Da, 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 da. That seems overkill to the max. Um, we don't want to drive people away. Um, we have to decide whether we want interviews at all. And if we want them, do they have to be formal, kind of structured the way OCA does it? Or can we make it somewhat more informal? Um, those are the issues we have to, to resolve. Um, and I don't, I'm not hearing a consensus yet. Um, I'm leaning personally toward a more informal process, either without interviews at all, or with interviews that could be done by one individual member, and then reporting back to the committee. But that's just me. George? Yep, Pat. Um, I, um, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable having only one person interviewing the uh, prospective people. Right. Um, I, I think that any time I've served on any kind of committee um, in my other life, um, <laughs> uh, there have always been more than one person. And I think that becomes a critical issue and, and speaks to transparency. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, I, and this was a, a earlier wonder, I think the SOIs in this situation yeah, it would be good. And if, if we are reviewing, or this committee is reviewing the SOIs, we can pull a, a pool together and, and speak to the reasons why we are interested in this person or that person. I don't see the need for formal interviews. Okay. So I'm, that sounds like two people at least, Mandy and Pat, are not that it would be perfectly okay with no formal interview at all um, and relying on the SOI. I have suggested that we retain the option. The option, and then it suggested an option. Because we option. have had a big pool. Okay. And I think I'm sort of like where one is, is that 
it's probably not necessary, but we should reserve the option. That makes sense. All right, so some language. Okay, so some language that would be provided for the next discussion would um, make interviews optional. Now, that still means that we would then have to do all the other things with, you know, in terms of coming up with interview questions, setting all, right, all that stuff. But that, we want to have the option at least for doing so that. We could put all of that after the SOIs are submitted. I mean, right. it kind of elongates the process, but once we see the SOIs, mm -hmm. then we as a committee could decide, do we need interviews? And if so, then we can tailor the questions to what we feel the SOIs didn't provide us. Mm -hmm. So that takes us back to the CAF briefly, quickly, because right now there's a, the thought that we might, this has not been decided by the council, so it's wide open. Um, maybe we could just make it, we still need CAFs, um, maybe we have CAFs and SOI in addition, and if in the end the CAFs do get changed by the council, um, that would would then be fine. But at the moment, it seems like CAF is required, and we're also going to require a statement of interest, mm -hmm. and we'll figure out how that's going to work eventually when it finally becomes real. But so after the SOI, we um, hold we reserve the uh, option for interviews, um, and then. Uh, we have this final step recommendation. So it sounds like I have some changes to make here um, and uh, bring it back to you at the next meeting. And hopefully at that point we can um, sign off on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, very quickly, I have the uh, vacancy notice has been published and a copy of it is in your packet. Um, after having done it, um, I realized that it would have been better if I had incorporated some of the language that had been available, I mean, if I just did look for it, um, that I'd gotten from the committee. So uh, in going forward in the future, I might have made some of the descriptors in that vacancy notice a little bit more precise, um, uh, but I think it's still adequate. You can look at it and decide for yourself. I felt it's important that we get the word out there, though I think from my experience and from what I've learned from Evan, the best way of getting the word out there is for us to uh, spread the word ourselves. Um, I have not heard back from uh, uh, the uh, town uh, manager's office as to CAFs. Um, so I, and I don't think there would be many, um, but so I have no, at the moment, there are no applicants that I'm aware of. Except for those that applied last year, right? Well, I don't even have those. Because, okay. And maybe Mandy, offline, you can help me. There, maybe there's a way I can search for these on my own very easily. I can, well, I can reach out to Evan, he'll tell me right away. But my understanding is I have to go through, I assume Angela and say, Angela, will you find these for me? But if there's a way I can find them myself, I'd be happy to do it. I've um, done it. Angela. You've done it, Lynn? I would go to Angela. And yeah, I did. And I haven't heard anything. So I'll go back to her again and just say, you know, Angela, could you uh, just give me the CA, you know, let me know where what they are. I don't think there are many, but I don't know. I'm not sure we've received any since we started getting our own CAFs. No, I don't think we so, have, no. So no. it might be all from the old, right, the the old set, which might yeah. all be, Evan might have them all. I don't remember when the finance committee was appointed versus when we flipped the system to right. who gets the emails. Let me reach out to Evan on that and see if I can get the old set, because that would obviously be the place we would start. And I would as chair start reaching out to these people. I have reached out to the current member, and as I said, she is undecided. Um, but for the, all of you and anyone else you know, um, we need to get the word out. Um, to urge people to apply if they're interested. So, and if I you know, really right. think it's important to under, for any new members to understand the really strange <laughs> of this year's budget and the extent to which this summer is not going to be a resting period. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. So, um, right. I, didn't, I don't have Andy's face in view, but I can only imagine what it looks like. <laughs> oh, he's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, we have in front of item seven, first of all, very much thanks to Pat for what she did. Um, she's created a document that 
um, it certainly helped me. Lynn um, and I worked on that together, so. Great, well, thank you both. Um, the chair will eventually return to real life, but not until, <laughs> not for a couple more weeks. Um, but uh, I've already started working my way through it. I don't think in the interest of time, in fact, in the interest of time, I'm, I'm gonna, not going to suggest that we look at it now, um, but I'm willing to be overruled. Um, we're almost reached our two hour point, um, but I've begun to make my way through it. There's some things that the chair can obviously do and should have done and should do, but I think it would be useful for us next time, early on in the agenda, hopefully, to actually work our way through it and, and, and uh, talk about it. Um, but a fair number of the items in priority one, um, and this was quite helpful to me. Um, my understanding from Evan was, was a little different. This at least gives me some clear sense of where things are at. We could go through this next time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, would like to go through it next time. I have some additions um, to the information that I can put in uh, and be... send a fresh copy before our next meeting. Okay. So I, I wanted to also mention, I went to the bylaw review committee's document that was bylaws right. for future considerations. And I actually threw the little descriptive from that document for yeah. each bylaw yeah. into right. the notes section. That was yeah. you, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I haven't <laughs> sent that to anyone. Um, okay. I could, um, I did that this morning for my own so I didn't have multiple documents I was yeah. looking at. Yeah. Um, well, if we, no one else has done that, I can ship that off to everyone. It's it's. Just why don't you ship it off to all of us, and then I'll look at it and see if there's anything I still want to add. Okay, that'd be great. The, the only concern I have is that at some point we do need to be working from the same document. Um, yeah, no, I but now we, have about five versions. So I can send that to Pat, and Pat can add whatever she wants from hers, and then it can come out. Yeah. Okay, and then you will send it to me or to everybody else. Put on SharePoint. I knew Pat wanted to review this. What I really needed was to just understand all of the nuances of the review process because Pat had served on that committee. Yes. And that was useful. Okay. All right. Um, so that will be our next agenda item. And I wait with bated breath um, <laughs> to hear from both. Mandy and Pat, but really, thank you, all of you, all three of you. Um, that's really appreciated. And uh, we now come wonderfully to the public comment section. And once again, we have managed to drive the public away. We had an attendee briefly, but let me just look again. I don't think, uh, you yeah. know. I don't think we have an attendee now. Uh, There's not. no attendee at this no time. No public present. So I will, uh, we will not have public comment. I do not have the minutes. Um, I will reach out to, uh, 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 to the council clerk. Um, but that, and future agenda items, we've gotten two notices. One's a pollinator resolution. And my recollection quickly is that that concerned some financial, had some financial implications that really GOL couldn't so, um, or do you want, I mean, I can dig it up, I have it, and I can put it on the agenda for next time and we can look at it and then decide what we want to do with it. I thought, Mandy, my memory vague as it is, is that we looked at it and said, this really looks like it needs to be looked at by somebody with more financial uh, implications of this resolution for the town. Yeah, there were concerns by the prior GOL committee, the prior membership that it actually enacted town policy. Um, in and would change the way town services and town things operate. So it might need a referral. I think the concern was of GOL that it might actually need discussed by what would be TSL. TSL, All right. So maybe put it on the agenda and then we'll decide what we want to do with it. Um, we actually could bring it to the council and on the consent agenda refer it to TSL and GOL automatic referral to GOL, but uh, referred to TSO. Do, did either of you that have looked at it more carefully think it should also go to finance? That wasn't my my impression. I thought I it was- I think it was just TSO. So so the it was the, I think it was the now therefore clause pretty much said town will not use certain pesticides or this or that in maintaining lawns and fields and stuff. 
Um, so I should put that on the agenda. Probably the better one than GOL than finance. Okay. George, why don't we do this since it's not been officially referred, but just recognize that it's coming. Right. Why don't we wait until I get it, and then I'll I'll put it on the consent and do the referral to TSO and automatic to GOL. Okay. That makes good. good sense. Okay. Good. Um, I had one other thing. What was it? My mind. There's another. What was the other? The uh, anti-Asian. There was an anti-Asian. Uh, mm -hmm. I have no idea what this is, but apparently it's from Darcy. Um, but it, I don't, there's no, I have no copy. There's nothing. So it's just, that was what was mentioned in your, your email. The other so, one was the LGBTQ. Pat, you and Evan. What happened? No, that needs to come up. Okay. Did you finish your review, Pat? Of that proclamation? Yes. Okay. okay. So just get me the final one and I'll, I'll refer to GOL. Okay. Right. It needs to come up because LGBT, LGBTQ. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? We're going to run out of letters someday, but at the but moment. Yeah, I, it'll have to, I guess, go on the June 1st council meeting agenda. So we have to do it next GOL. Yeah. So we need That's that. It. Okay. So that should be on the agenda. Well, I can do it as a... Yeah, I can refer it on the 18th, but no. It, it's an automatic, once it's submitted, it's automatic to GOL. So it should come to the GOL meeting uh, on the 20th. Okay. All right. Is that right? We should have acted on it today. Mm. Sorry. Our, we have a meeting the 18th, but then June 1st. June 1st is the first day of the month it would do. So I think that's okay, right, Pat? Yeah, I mean, at this point, yeah. Okay. Especially since we can't even meet to. Especially what? We can't meet we to can't do it. We can't even yeah. gather to raise a flag. Well, yeah. we might, by that point, we might be able to at least get. You know, yeah, we might raise the flag. But right, we can do something, right? I don't have to recuse myself because I'm queer, do I? Uh, no. Not that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> We'll discuss that at the next meeting. Something, <laughs> just last thought, last thought. Legal review. This is something we really, and uh, we're not gonna talk about it now, but you put it in the back of your head. Every bylaw that we look at, right, eventually, at some point, according to the town manager, needs to go to the, the attorneys. And so part of our process at some point is to make a decision whether we think we wanna do that or not. Bachelman has been clear to me. He thinks everything should go to the attorneys um, involving bylaws, changes, amendments, new by obviously a new bylaw, but even changes. Now, I think there's some reluctance in some cases where something's been on the books and the change is minor. But think of Darcy's uh, bylaw, whatever. It, you know, we didn't discuss it today, but I think normally with any kind of change, final step or some step in the process is me sending it to Paul and asking the lawyers to look at it. We don't want to send it to them until we think it's ready. Um, and we also have to decide whether we want to send it to them. And that's a discussion for a future date. Maybe I'll put it on the agenda next time if we have time. But in the back of your mind, think about, you know, when you do, when we do get a point with a bylaw, um, normal sort of best practices is have the lawyers take a look at it. But that takes time. A yeah. lot of time <laughs> because and sometimes it comes slow. back with changes and we don't understand the changes. Mm -hmm. um, so I can address that with Paul and, um, you know, we'll see uh, changing lawyers behavior is perhaps impossible, but we could at least ask. Um, but just for the future, part of the process we have to follow or decide not to follow is legal is have the lawyers look at it. And in some cases, two lawyers on this committee are now laughing. Uh, well, I know, but uh, they need work. Let's face it. They're like everybody else. They need work. So I think the, the problem that we have is, is that once you have a bylaw and the, the, plastic, the bag one, plastic right. bag, for example, it doesn't serve a purpose to have a bylaw if you're not going to be able to enforce it. And uh, to have somebody who has the experience of uh, 
uh, mun un municipal law and can really advise us? Is it worded in a way and is the mechanism established in a way that makes it enforceable uh, is important information. Fair, good. Um, by the way, this for the public, this falls under items not anticipated by the chair. <laughs> The other piece that's that because I of the know. chair's memory lapse, but that's, that's um... <laughs> we'll put that on the next time's agenda too. George, I thought that we also were going to be having Kathy come to our next meeting on the condo bylaw. At some point, I, I think given all the things we're doing right now, I, I don't think there's any real, pre yes, we are going okay. to invite her, but it was left open as to when. Um, okay. If Kathy would really like to come, if she's expressed that desire, I, perhaps we can we can put her in. But it is on my list to invite her. But right now I'm looking at an agenda that we still have the process to resolve. Um, I assume we'll be looking at, well, no, we won't be looking at the, uh, the plastic bag ban at least. Um, but we'll have the, the, uh, we have the whole uh, list. LGBTQ, I don't know, uh, we'll see. But um, if there's space, I might reach out to her and see if she wants to join us. But I do, I, you're right, she's going to be invited at some point. I'd like to make some headway with the uh, uh, what we've been referred to now for months that the chair has been sitting on, and now is actually uh, we've got a document that we can actually work on. Um, so I, I hope the next meeting will spend some time, at least maybe substantial time, working our way through that and deciding what needs to be worked on now and what doesn't, and who's going to do what. Um, so that will take up I hope a good bit of our time. What I learned by talking with Pat, a lot of them need consultation with outside people outside our group yes right. that is correct that's and that's the start right. that process exactly so. and i'm looking at that and and i will be ready to make some suggestions and i assume that's the chair the chair would reach out to whatever con con com or whatever and say here's the deal you know please look at it and then get back to us right all right okay all right another two hours you've successfully <laughs> You know, click and clack, right? Evan never liked this part of my speech. So <laughs> <laughs> we have spent excellent two hours here, um, but I think it's time for us to move on. So I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned and uh, wish you all a good day. Stay healthy, stay well. And I'll be seeing you all too soon, I'm sure, somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, Nancy, thank you. Wherever you are, Nancy, thank you for putting up with this.